Hi guys, today we are collecting data. You see you have four vocabulary terms I'd like you to copy down. Uh, pretty easy what these are about. Population, when you're going to collect data, you're taking a survey, either by mail, telephone, standing outside of Walmart, asking people questions and such. And the population is the entire group you want information about. All right, if you want information on high school students, seven through 12, uh, in America, you're t that's who you're talking about, the entire population, all of the high school students 7 through 12 in America, all right? Um, if you want to uh, take a survey of people who play soccer, then it's all of the people who play soccer in the country or in the world or what have you. Now, obviously, you can't do that with every survey, so usually what you take is a sample all right, that's the second word here. A sample is just part of that population. So go back to the high school example. I want to take a survey of all students 7 through 12, but I can't do that. So I'm going to take a survey of students 7 through 12 in our school. All right, and that would be a sample of the population. Alrighty, uh, these other two have to do with whether the sample or whether the questions are good as in uh, whether they're biased or not. Um, if a biased, if, if a sample is biased, that means it's not really representative of the population you want, all right? Um, I'm trying to sample uh, soccer players, but I go and ask people at the mall at random. Those necessarily aren't people who play soccer, so they might know the, not, they not, might not know the answers to what you're asking. All right, or can answer intelligently. Um, biased questions are ones that you might be asking the right people, but you're asking them questions and encouraging them to answer yes or no or whatever. All right, there's words that are in that question that uh, encourage them one way or the other. Okay, so we're going to fill in some blanks here. Uh, hopefully, my penmanship with this little tablet will be okay. I want to go to uh, maybe a nice, well, maybe I want to go to a nice blue here. That'd be a nice blue. Okay, I'm going to fill in with blue. So um, I'm going to put in, uh, in a random sample, okay, a random sample. Every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected, okay? So our little high school example, that really wouldn't be a random sample because we were only sampling people in our school, all right? In a random sample, we would send out surveys across the country so that everyone had a chance of being in the selection sample, okay? In a systematic sample, ooh, big word. All right, can I fit it in there? Systematic sample, um, a rule of some sort is used to select the members of the population, okay? Um, it could be just simply, I'm only going to use the people from uh, the county that I'm living in, okay? Um, I'm only going to use the people that I can reach on the telephone, some kind of rule that limits that population, okay? Uh, in a stratified sample, okay, let's see if I could fit stratified in there. Ha, I can't, but I cheated. All right, a stratified sample. The population is divided into distinct uh, groups. Put the word groups in there. All right, these are the things that I want you to copy down. Uh, members are selected from each group. Okay, so you're going to take that sample and then you're going to divide that sample into certain groups, okay, according to some rule, all right? And we'll talk more about that, all right? Um, there's different kinds of samples uh, as well. Uh, besides these, there's a convenience sample, okay? A lot of times surveys come down to convenience because simply you don't have the money or you don't have the time or you don't have the ability to get to all the people that you want, all right, um, it's basically who are the people who are easily accessible. All right, so those people that it's very easy to get to. Okay, oh, accessible. So I'm trying to talk and do this other at the same time. Okay, so it's easy to go down to 
uh, Walmart and ask people. It's easy to pick up the phone and call um, the people that I know. Uh, that it would be more of convenience. All right. In a self-selected sample, that means the people that take part in the survey are only doing so on their uh, volunteering, okay, on their willingness to do it. Members of the population can be can select themselves, all right, by volunteering. Select themselves. All right. So a little different than a random sample, okay? Um, it's kind of like, you know, I, I may choose not to. Um, or I may choose to participate. So those would be a, a self-selected sample. Okay, so let's jump into some examples here. Let's turn this off and turn this one on. And just move this up a little bit. All right, two examples here. A reporter wants to determine whether residents of your county agree or disagree with budget cuts uh, that will close some branches of the public library. The reporter asks each cu customer at one branch of the public library whether they agree or disagree with the cuts. Okay, so what we're after is who who would you want to ask? Well, the population that you would want to know about or want to ask is all of the people in the county. Okay, so it says right up there to determine whether the residents of the county agree or disagree. So all residents of the county. Squeeze that in there. All right, hopefully you can read that, of the county. All right, uh, but because the reporter only asks customers at one library branch, the sample really is a sample out of convenience. Okay, that reporter really should go all about the county to get his samples, but he didn't, so that's out of convenience. All right. Uh, number two here, or letter B, a company wants to determine whether people who eat yogurt will like the company's new brand of yogurt. The company sends a researcher to a mall, and the researcher asks for volunteers to, to, to participate in a taste test comparing the new brand of yogurt to other brands. Okay, so the population you want to talk to is people that eat yogurt. Because if people do not eat yogurt, well, they're not going to even want to take part. All right, so you want people who eat yogurt. All right, and they're probably going to be more, um, I guess, better able to tell if it's if it's good or not because they're you know they're used to eating different types of yogurt. Okay, so because the researcher asks for volunteers, it is a self-selected sample. Alrighty, can't can't very well force people to do it, so it's a self-selected sample. Alrighty, so again, pretty straightforward. You just got to go back to those uh, definitions that we listed on the, on the first page here. So first checkpoint, thing like this. Okay, so I would like you to pause the video and describes the survey's population and the sampling method. Because in about two seconds, the answers are going to pop up. Okay, so there you go. There's my answers I would uh, create here. The population is all Americans. You can even catch that right from up here. Okay, and the sampling method, I would say, would be convenience because the researcher just went to a shopping mall. Okay, um, if it wasn't convenience, they'd do a survey a phone survey or, or a mailing survey across the country. Okay, so again, pretty straightforward. Uh, if you know what these, these terms mean, okay, you can apply them there. So I'm going to turn this one off, and we're going to go to example two. Uh, this one a little different here. A county council wants residents to give their opinions about a potential increase in property taxes. Residents can say either yes or no to the increase, the council needs the tax increase to keep every public library branch in the county open. All right, so because the council cannot survey every resident, it decides to survey a sample. So we want to know whether each one of these 
um, would be a biased sample or unbiased. Okay, so the first one is survey patrons at one of the library branches. Okay, so if you're surveying about keeping the library open and you're just going to go to the library, well, don't you think that those people would want to keep the library open? Yeah, yeah, because they're using it. All right, so this is definitely a biased way of taking a sample. All right, uh, letter B here, give a phone number for county residents to call. Um, again, this would be a self-selected sample, okay? Um, and usually with self-selected, that is going to be biased as well, all right? Because usually you're going to get people who, they could go either way. Either they're really for it or they're really against it. And either way, that's a biased thing because they're taking the time to pick up the number and call, all right? Um, letter C, visit a random sample. I like this word random. Okay, sample of the county's res residents at home and record their opinions. Okay, this to me, I think out of the three would be the most unbiased. Okay, now if you wanted to take it a little bit further and say, well, it'd be biased because not everyone's going to be home. Yeah, you might be able to go that far. Okay, but I think out of these three, because you're randomly sampling people. Okay, you're not making them call out of their own uh, omission, okay, or their own volunteerism, I should say. You're not taking people just at the library, you're taking people at random. So I like that one a lot, okay? All right, let me turn that one off and let's go to uh, checkpoint number two. Okay, if you saw that little flash, uh, that was totally me. I put the wrong survey on there, so I fixed it. So uh, checkpoint number two says refer to checkpoint number one. So I've got that on there. Do you think the survey could result in a biased sample? So again, pause the video. Answers come in in just a second. Okay, and here's my answer. Absolutely, this is uh, biased because you're asking people if the if Americans feel that they have enough time to do what they do while they're shopping. Of course they're doing what they want to do. So they're going to say, yeah, we got lots of time to do what we do. So that would best definitely be a biased thing. All right. Okay, on to example number three. Um, I turned white. Okay, we'll go with it. All right, so tell whether the question is potentially biased. Uh, explain your answer. If the question is biased, rewrite it so it's not. Uh, so would you rather spend a lot of money watching a movie in a crowded movie theater or spend less money and watch a movie at home? Okay, this is definitely a biased statement or biased uh, question, I should say. All right. Um, when you use m words like spend a lot of money, that's turning people off. Okay, in a crowded movie theater, again, that's turning people off because th that's giving them a bad impression. Okay, so to fix this, um, would you rather, we'll just cross this out, watch a movie in a movie theater or take out this part about the money, watch a movie at home. Done. Okay, you've taken all of the... the convincing or encouraging words one way or the other out okay uh, part B this definitely would be biased as well don't you think that watching a football game is more interesting than watching a baseball game you're you're definitely giving the impression that the football game is more interesting okay so to I'm just gonna put a little arrow there that's biased as well to, to fix this I would take this right out and just say would you rather watch a football game and just take all of this out too and just put in the word or a baseball game there done okay no encouraging words one way or the other all right Okay, so we'll turn that one off, and we will go to checkpoint number three. Oh, look, it turned black back again. Oh, that's cool. All right, so do you agree with the unfair policy 
that requires students to wear uniforms. Just like the last one, tell me if it's biased or unbiased, and we'll be back in just a flash. So pause it. Okay, we're back. Hey, it's definitely biased. All right, it says, do you agree with the unfair policy? As soon as you say unfair, that's kind of telling people it's unfair. You know, the people are going to say, well, yeah, I definitely agree. It's unfair. Okay, you just cross that out. Do you agree with the policy that requires students to wear uniforms in school? Done. That makes it a little more, or, or a little, yeah, a little more unbiased, I should say. Okay. All right. So that is the video for tonight. Hope you follow along. Hope you filled everything in so you get the points tomorrow. And thanks for watching.